Welcome to this sacred geometry series. In this episode, you're going to learn how to draw the symbol called Taurus and what are the meanings associated to the symbol and also what is the spiritual symbolism behind it. Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ingrid from My Inner Palette. If you're new to my channel, make sure that you're subscribing to it, that you're giving a like to the videos and also sharing them with your friends if you feel that you're learning new things here because it really helps my channel to thrive. Make sure that you're checking the description box below because I'm going to leave you all the links to the different episodes and also a beautiful gift. In this Taurus class, I'm gonna teach you how to draw the Taurus, but in the most basic form, because there are all the ways that you can actually draw the Taurus, but for that, it's a little bit more complicated. So in this class, you're gonna learn the 101 technique of how to draw it. To start with the basics, the Taurus is a sacred geometry symbol that represents the energy flow and interconnectedness found in the universe. It is a three-dimensional shape resembling a donut or a smoke ring with energy flowing both inwards and outward in a continuous loop. Another way that you can think of it is like an apple without the core part. Like if you had like a tube and you, you get like all the core of the apple, it would be like a shape like that, that is continuously flowing the energy around the apple. If we take it to a representation of how it works with us, it's pretty much the same. So the energy that is flowing through our main chakras, which are aligned through our spine, is the same. The energy goes up and then it goes like this donut around us. And that's pretty much our energetic field, our auric field, where everything that we want to attract to our lives it's happening. This is why I like teaching how to draw it because it's a first goal to start like visualizing it because it looks like a net and it's a net that is in constant movement everywhere that you look at it. Oh, I wish I had like a physical example to show you. Okay, I have like, sorry guys, but I have like this crappy uh, thing here. So picture that it's like an energetic feel like this and what it does is that it's like turning inside out all the time just like this right and it doesn't stop but it it does it like this and you are right in the middle of it so you are in that bit over there <laughs> and all of this is turning and turning around so it's like the con constant flow of the energy that it's around you okay I hope that that's a more visual way of explaining how it looks like because I don't have anything else that it would resemble it that you can see because I obviously have one but you cannot see it. And this my friends represent the cyclical nature of energy and the perpetual flow of life. Another very important meaning of the Taurus is around the manifestation and creation of our own reality. So how does that work? It's associated with this process of manifestation and it involves having like all our thoughts, emotions and intentions flowing through us in our auric field. And this is how we perceive what we attract as reality. The fun thing about this is that if you start understanding and grasping this concept more in depth and you start meditating with it, it means that you can actually change whatever you're outputting and the energy that is flowing through you. And if you are able to master it and you start changing your belief system, you start working on your stuck emotions, you start working on what is it that you're thinking every day, how you're communicating with everyone else around you, and most importantly, how you're communicating with yourself, then you can start changing your reality into something that you really, really want to experience. Another meaning associated with the Taurus is around the protection and resilience because it's our auric field. It also represents like a bumper from everything external. But this is the important thing. Sometimes we've created the space of sanctuary under limiting beliefs 
And when that happens, you're basically staying in your comfort zone, in the bumper zone that it won't allow anything to get in unless you recognize and you start being more aware of your personal processes and you start thinking, oh, wait a minute, that's a limiting belief. How can I change it? How can we do something different with it? How can I release this? Or if you're acting out of emotions and patterns that you haven't observed before within yourself, then you can start observing, oh, you know what? I'm really good at getting angry. Why is that? Why do I feel so much hunger? And I either express it in a way that might not be healthy, or I just swallow it and just leave it inside of me. Because if you're doing that, you might be creating emotional blocks and a lot of other things that come with it, right? Or you might be manifesting it in different ways, um, getting burned or things like that, just because you're not expressing your emotions in a healthy way or at all. Have you ever worked with the Taurus before? If you have, or if you haven't, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to know what are your experiences or what are your thoughts around everything that you're learning throughout this video. So without further ado, let's jump into the practical part of this class. All right, my friends, today you're gonna learn how to make the symbol, which is called Taurus. And for that, we're gonna go through all the materials that you need for this class. First of all, we're gonna be using a compass. With the compass, I prefer to have this one that you can swap a pencil for a pigment liner or a fine liner. And this is because sometimes you want to do the sketch first with the pencil and then trace it with, on top of it, with a pigment liner or a fine liner. Secondly, you're gonna need a second pencil as well, something that is not attached to your compass. By the way, if you have a compass that you cannot exchange the pencil for a pigment liner, that's totally fine. Just go with it and for now just practice how the symbol works. If you feel the need to later on go and find another compass that's totally up to you but i find this one's very useful the ones that you can exchange the pencil for something else then another element that we're going to be using today is a protractor in this case i have like the ones that have only 180 degrees but even if you have like a 360 even better and obviously a ruler we're gonna be using and here i have sort of like the the ones that are not mandatory but you can still use if you want it so here i have the pigment liner which it's a 0.5 tip in this case and i also have the set of fine liners which they are 0.3 millimeter tips and also they come in a variety of different colors but it's totally optional. You don't necessarily need them to practice the Taurus. Of course, there's always an eraser there in case that you may need to erase some mistake. And without further ado, let's just start the class. So first, I just want to cleanse this space a little bit and bring some light. Even like the sun started coming out outside. <laughs> I think that you can even see that from the shades that they're created now anyways so first of all what we want to do is to trace around the middle of the page with your pencil and your ruler we want to trace a horizontal line around the middle of the page but this is roughly okay there And then with the protractor, what you want to do is to, if you go into the middle ish of the page and you do a line there, then you're gonna have like a little bit of an X. If you've never used a protractor before, the idea is that right in the middle, you level it up at zero degrees on both sides. And the cross is meant to be, the, the point of the cross is right 
in the middle of the protractor aligning it to it and you want to align this you want to align the zero to the line that you've made and the 180 degrees also to the line that you've made once you have that what we're going to be doing is that at every 10 degree interval we're going to be doing a dot all the way around this side and also around the bottom part okay so i just need to get a little bit closer to see what i'm doing and once it's aligned then we go i do it every 10 degrees try to be patient with this and The idea is to be patient in this process. Once I've done one side, I'm gonna flip this protractor over and we do the same. We place the little X right in the middle of the protractor and we make sure that we are aligning to zero and 180 degrees on both sides. And then we go again. adding dots every 10 degrees. Making sure that your protractor is not moving. And try to be as accurate as possible because it's going to give you a more defined result at the end. All right, so now what you have is pretty much a circle. And this here will be also uh, like a point on each side, right? So every 10 degrees, we have a little dot. So here is where I'm going to be using a um, fine liner so you can see that you can mix and match. You can continue doing it with a pencil if that's what you have available but otherwise you can use a pigment liner like this one, a fine liner just to give it a dash of color. So what we want to do is to place the needle of your compass right in the middle of your cross that you have here and open your compass up to the point of one of the dots because now you have like the circumference so now you're getting exactly the same size of radius so in this case once you've done this and it's a line the idea is that you start with each one of these points. So you put the um, needle into the first point, for example. And now we do a circle. We move to the second dot. And we do another circle. Move to the third dot. And I'm gonna stop counting there, it's just and you go through all the dots. And you might start encountering that the dots cross over with the lines of the new circles that you've made, and that's perfect. So just keep it up, following where the dots are with the line. and keep on moving around. If in this case, the dot is like slightly to the side, I try to go where the dot would be, but in the line. So I would get a more accurate result. So 
sometimes it's less than a millimeter so and then once we get to the line now we cross over to the bottom part of it and again here the dot is a little bit separated from the line so I'm just gonna place the needle in the line rather than in the dot itself just be careful in this process that the aperture of your compass is not changing midway through because that will affect the result of the symbol And once you're reaching here, for example, you have some dots and because we've been moving along a little bit uh, through the through the circle, uh, some of the points are not aligning anymore. So it's very important that you follow through more with the compass than just getting obsessed with where the points are because here this human error whenever you're using the protractor. So for example, here you see that we have the first Intersect, intersecting lines from previous circles so the dot is here but what I want to do is just move the needle to the intersection of them in this case the closer to the dot itself okay and then we go again with a circle and when we move to the next one the dot is there, but the intersection is here. It's like a millimeter difference, but go to the intersection, that's the idea. That way you make sure that it's gonna be beautiful and accurate. And we continue to see that this one is there in the middle, so we go into the intersection and we trace the circle again in the intersection closest to the to the point and we create the circle and then here as well it will be the intersection that you have between the pencil line that you did previously and the other circles that is the closest to the dot and there we go and there we go friends so here you have it this is the easiest and more beginner friendly to create the torus if you wanted to explore a different way of doing this I'm so so happy to show you but for that we would be using the seed of life so make sure that for next time you have done the seed of life video and then I'm going to show you a different way of doing the torus that is a little bit more intricate and complicated than this form. If you wanted to do some art with it, you could potentially use a pigment liner or a fine liner and start painting some of the shapes that you have inside, or you could potentially also start uh, playing around and I'm not gonna do it now with the with the green because I want to show you how it would look like but I don't want to commit to that pattern at the moment so I'm just gonna switch it over to a pencil and show you what I mean okay so with your compass the other thing that you can do to create a more intricate pattern that you can work on as art would be to place the needle in the middle of your drawing and then you can go to each one of these intersections so for example here the closest one and then you sort of like draw a circle then you can do the same of the needle a little bit more look for another intersection and do another circle and then a little bit more and draw another circle and in this case you start creating different type of shapes that then you can start 
coloring either with pigment liners or a fine liner you can do it like black and white or you can use different colors uh, you can use pencil um, as well to create your own design whatever you may want to create just go ahead and here I'm just gonna for the time being delete the circles and delete all the points and show you how this beautiful torus shape has come together some of the paint up without wanting it done. There we go. There we go. And here you have the toilet shape. If you're new to my channel, remember to hit the subscribe button below and like the video and share with your family and friends because it really supports all the endeavors that I'm doing here, trying to connect and share all this information and knowledge with, with you guys. And remember, there's a beautiful gift in the description box. So make sure that you're checking it. It has been a joyful experience for me to have you in this class. So I really appreciate you being here. I hope that you have a beautiful morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are in the world and I'll see you next time.